The journey toward the Atlantic Sun Conference Championship began tonight in Spartanburg with the quarterfinal round of the A-Sun Conference Tournament and Upstate with a commanding 90-54 victory. Advances into the semifinals. They will head out on the road to take on Florida Gulf Coast winners against the Jacksonville Dolphins. And now we take a look back at this contest, Phil. It was a game that Upstate trailed only once, and that was 3 nothing early. They matched that immediately and never looked back. Yeah, it was a total dominating performance by USC Upstate coming off. Really a disappointing game versus Northern Kentucky and Kennesaw State. Been struggling coming into this matchup, but a good matchup in the first meeting between these two teams. But Upstate really clicking on all cylinders, advancing to the semifinals. Let's look at how this affected the big picture overall. Here's a look at the bracket in the A-Sun tournament. As you can see, all three of the top seeds advance. And the thriller took place between the four and five seeds, Northern Kentucky and Lipscomb down to the wire. It took extra periods, extra minutes. And in overtime, it was Lipscomb by one possession. Yeah, maybe a little surprising, it, it, at least to me. I thought Northern Kentucky uh, may come out on top there, but it is tournament basketball and nothing really to expect. But that's what we like to see, overtime games, intensity. Uh, by far, Lipscomb, Northern Kentucky, the best game of the evening. Let's listen in for a moment at the press conference following tonight's upstate victory over Kennesaw State. Oh, yeah, we definitely think we can win. Now, we think of that a little bit more than we tonight than we did after North, Northern Kentucky beat us, but uh, basketball is very fickle, and um, tournament basketball is particularly fickle. Uh, I, I don't know that there's another sport quite like it where you see the types of upsets you see in the NCAA or conference tournaments. But, we, yeah, they, we believe it because we've done it. We've won at good places. We've defeated good teams on the road. So we know we can do it, but you know we have to stay focused one possession at a time. And I think uh, I think these guys are capable, without a doubt. We wanted to come out and set the tone defensively, and you know they had 17 in the first half, uh, and we felt that we did that. And when you're intense defensively, that eliminates the jitters of the postseason. They got quick, and you know we got into a flow offensively because of our defense. It opens it up a little more. Uh, for sure, you know, they, they can't stay on me as much because, you know, these guys are, you know, going to work. Um, and, you know, it just gives the whole team confidence when, you know, we're all getting buckets and that's how we want to play. And that's how we're going to have to play against Florida Gulf Coast uh, when we go down there. If our defense is really playing at a really high level, you know, we can beat, you know, pretty much anybody. But if our defense is, you know, slacking and we're, you're not rotating right, communicating, you know, that's when we have you know, trouble, you know, winning games. So I guess emphasizing, you know, Gulf Coast, if we if we uh, communicate like we did tonight and, you know, rotate and help each other out, I think, you know, the result for Gulf Coast, um, we could come out with a W. That's if we, you know, come ready to play and not slacking, so. When we move the ball offensively as a team play together, we're at our best and we're driving and kicking it and looking for each other and sharing the ball, then we're at our best. When we're not doing that, we're just we're just not in effect. So when we tonight we emphasized that we were gonna share the ball, we was gonna work together, we was gonna pass the ball to each other and that's what got our offense flowing from the outside. We had open looks by drawing help from the team. They was drawing help on two and then they we was kicking it and we had open shots everywhere. Gulf Gulf Coast shot their best percentages from all areas against us down there and um, you know, there's a few things we, strategically we we got to look at, but um, I think I think we we have to take care of the ball. Probably get a little deeper into some possessions and just manage the f tempo of the game a little bit better. In addition to other whatever uh, tweaks we make, they won't be major, but there'll be some because we won't even get to practice tomorrow. Uh, we'll have to do it between the ears. So now let's take a look back at the highlights from tonight's Upstate victory in round one of the Atlantic Sun Conference Tournament. And as you will see, there were plenty of memorable moments in this first round matchup. Well, Kennesaw State, there's a rarity right there. Hitting a perimeter jump shot is Pruitt. Boy, did he play well tonight, Jason. 32 in this building back in January. Uh, poured in 26 tonight uh, as Kennesaw not able to get the job done. But there's Shunquez Stevens. You saw him in the press conference a few moments ago. Another spectacular night for him. Upstate just uh, clicking on all cylinders to use that uh, terminology once again, looking really good here at home. 
uh, as Damian Wilson looked good in the early going, especially for Kennesaw State, kind of quiet there in the second half. Both Pruitt and Wilson end up in double figures for Kennesaw State. Upstate puts four in that category with Green, who led the way with 21. Shunquez Stevens had 14. Josh Cuthbertson and Michael Buchanan both with 11, and we shouldn't let it go unnoticed that Buchanan ended up with a double-double, 11 points and 12 rebounds. And here's a look at the overall stats for these two teams. And that first line right there tells the story, Phil. 52.5% from the field for Upstate and under 30% from the field for Kennesaw State. Yep. Yeah, Jason, both teams putting up 59 shots tonight. Kennesaw only connecting on 16 of those field goals. Uh, both teams good from the line. Rebounding, you're going to have a lot of rebounds when there's that many missed shots. And one stat that's not on there, and looking at that overview, Upstate with 22 assists tonight, Kennesaw State with only six. We talked about some of the individual performers. Let's look at our key players from tonight's game. Ty Green, as you would expect, earlier this week announced as the Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. And Nigel Pruitt, who really came to life for Kennesaw State and led all scorers with 26. Boy, well, did he ever. And you, you talk about Atlantic Sun Players of the Year. Of course, Ty Green graduating will, will leave upstate at the end of this season. But Nigel Pruitt, after a night like this, gives you reason to believe that he could be in that conversation come next year. Uh, so definitely some encouraging uh, performances. And we talked about that junior-laden squad that Kennesaw State has. They will definitely be a team to be reckoned with come next season. The solid crop of juniors will turn to seniors and it will be experienced leadership for the Kennesaw State Owls next time around. Upstate not quite having to wait that far. They'll be in action on Thursday night on the road in Fort Myers as they take on Florida Gulf Coast. Try and get over that semifinal hump that has bit them the last two years in a Sun tournament play. For everybody on our crew, everybody at the Atlantic Sun Conference who is walking you through this tournament. It's been a privilege and you'll want to keep up with everything on ESPN3. Beyond this as the tournament rolls on Thursday night and a ticket to the big dance is on the line.